So uh, our first pitch is a game called Antivirus by, and they already have a team name, Black Tesseract. So let's hear it for them. Yeah. OK, so my name is Ibrahim Nakhal. Uh, this here is my associate. I'm LaShawn Prane. I'm programmer. He's, uh, yeah. I'm LaShawn Prane. I'm the programmer on uh, Antivirus. And uh, this is what we have so far. So yeah, that's uh, the trailer we have. Pretty much what the game is, is it is a first person roguelike bullet hell. If that's a lot of words, it's kind of a mix of pretty much two or three genres. Um, the pitch, the high concept of it pretty much is, is that you're an antivirus program going through a computer that is just infested with a host of viruses from worms to trojans and everything like that. At the end of each level, you kind of go up against a boss, which is based off of one of the big nasties that wreaked havoc on the internet back in the early days. Things like, if anyone remembers, Code Red. So um, our target platform is pretty simple. It's a PC game, um, first and foremost. And it's got controls already set for PC. But the limited number of controls that we have also make it very compatible to switch over to any sort of controllers for any kind of console. So for inspiration, pretty much um, I can say it's a mix of three games. Um, we've got things like The Binding of Isaac with lots of enemies that are pretty simple and have uh, unique patterns. Um, Enter the Gungeon, which is pretty much a bullet hell but as also a dungeon roguelike. And um, in third person, Drunken Robot Pornography, if uh, anyone's ever heard of that title. It's a great game, it's a great game. So as you guys saw, we already kind of have an art style and inspiration for the game. Um, it's a very Tron-esque is what I've been told. I kind of called it myself a Digiscape environment, but pretty much it's what an imagination of the computer would be. So our scope for the semester is pretty much that we have six playable levels. I know this sounds like a lot, but uh, when we consider that it has a system already to generate levels for us, it's pretty easy to uh, envision more than just a single level. Sure. So for risk assessment, we're looking at, uh, so. Ibrahim here has a lot going on already with this project. It's kind of his baby, and I'm coming in on it. It's great. Uh, data, well, we, we have a data management. We're going to use GitHub, so that's going to help us from losing everything, uh, stuff like that. We both already know how to use GitHub, and as a two-programmer team, pretty strong. Uh, for game balancing and testing, what I mean by it's already fun, uh, by which I mean every level is going to be um, fun on its own, and that means we can test from the beginning pretty easily. It's not like we're building an RPG or anything like that. Uh, procedural generation, shouldn't that be really hard? We already have a system in place which works like Spelunky, and, uh, meaning that we're bringing in bits of level that are already complete and putting them together. And lastly, the teammates. Uh, putting together a team is gonna depend on you guys and the school. Um, we already have ourselves and a few associates that we can bring along, but uh, we really would love your help. So these are the team members we'll need. We'll need art, modeling, music, and 
scripting, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm getting waved for time. Yes, you are. Uh, do we have any? Let's hear it for them first. Great. Uh, do you guys have any questions? We do. Hi. Uh, I love the trailer. It was awesome. Uh, but if I was to come and work on the game as an artist, like a 3D modeler, in the trailer, there's many just geometric shapes. What uh, interesting things could you make a model or a console artist do for the game? So um, that's something that I found actually pretty interesting on my own, is that uh, when you've got a limited number of uh, shapes, you've got like a very geometric style, you can create still almost anything that looks like something. Um, and it's just a matter of like creativity, like how can I make something that looks cool, but at the same time is very simple. That's, yeah. Yeah, just personally, I want a giant, like, neon flaming lion head in there just shooting missiles. That's, that's probably doable if uh, someone who has lots of modeling expertise comes on the team. Uh, so, since you already have a prototype and that's very solid, and how many people do you actually need? Um, generally, um, it wouldn't be a very large team. Uh, kind of just like one of uh, every kind, we definitely would need like UI um, and a modeler. Uh, definitely scripters would be a big help. And that's uh, kind of what we're going for. But as well, you know, each thing comes in its own. We've got level bits that are being pieced together, and that's how we're generating each level. So that's where a level designer would come in. He's the one making each piece that the computer uses. Are there any mechanics that are pertinent to your game that would make you stand out from other similar first-person roguelike bullet hell games such as Serious Sam? So, um, first, uh, Serious Sam being a first-person shooter and very hard doesn't exactly make it a roguelike since it's got save points and doesn't have randomly generated content either. So, uh, what I think makes this a part, uh, first and foremost, is that one, it's simple to the art style and enemies are kind of unique and interesting. And three is that it is, you know, a mix of three genres. Thanks. Yeah, hi, I just wanted to know, um, what engine are you guys using or, are you create, or did you create your own engine for it? Uh, this is using the Unity engine currently. So specifically, as far as the scriptures you would need, you would need someone that's Proficient in Unity or? Um, pretty much C sharp, just, uh, yeah. Uh, proficiency in Unity itself for being a scripter, uh, that comes as a big plus. Okay, thank you. Hi, someone from online is asking if your levels are pre-made or randomly generated. They are randomly generated. How it works is that uh, I have a system that actually puts down pieces of level and then it kind of just connects them all together with the uh, doors. But Spelunky works the same way. Spelunky works the same way. Uh, he created various parts, which are working pieces of level that he puts together in 16 by 16 grids of tiles. Uh, and he was able to get really challenging, really dynamic gameplay out of that. So I don't see a reason why it wouldn't be even cooler in 3D. I thought she was going to ask a question. Okay. Anything else? We have one more minute for questions before we go into the judge, judge's land. Last chance. <clears throat> so is the first person shooter mechanic um, kind of the only mechanic? Are you running around shooting and that's all you can do? Or what other player abilities would there be in this game? So currently it's that uh, you do go around only shooting, but it's that you unlock different kinds of weapons. And that's the sort of dynamic aspect to the first person shooting. Of course, we can uh, take into account that we might add, you know, items that you can use later on. And that's, that's pretty much a good uh, thing that I have on my list. It's just that we don't have it for our prototype currently. Great. So that's as much time as we have for, for questions. Uh, one thing that I did forget to mention is that. Uh, we're going to be hanging out here. All of the teams are going to be hanging out uh, after 
this, uh, this presentation. So if you have other questions, you can come in and ask them uh, at that point. Also, uh, we're online, so anyone who's online can ask any questions that they want as well. Uh, okay, so now we're going to turn it over to judges for judges' feedback. If there's any specific feedback that they want to give. Hi, guys. Um, great presentation overall. Nice job. Uh, I really think the trailer that you gave was in exciting, so I think that helps a lot. It really pumps up the energy, uh, and starting off with that was really good for that reason. Um, one thing I would want you to, to wor watch out for is a common process in games is to make a prototype of something and then sort of break that down and then make the real version of it. And uh, we have had some collabs come through where we are relying too much on basically prototypes and that we're trying to build on top of a prototype that isn't really built to last, if you know what I mean. So I just want you to keep that in mind as you go forward. Um, don't be afraid to you know, sort of rebuild something if it really needs it. Um, it'll be worth it in the long run. C can I add on top of that? I have several industry stories that I can tell you about. Uh, the Sims 3, for instance, was a prototype, and then they built the real game, and it was painful to work in. Um, yeah, throw your, throw your prototypes away, definitely. Uh, any other judges' comments? I guess it's just uh, quick feedback. Um, I thought it's a really unique concept. Um, I feel like it's really well thought out. Um, definitely sounds like a really interesting game uh, to work on as a designer um, or level designer. Just the idea that you're making little gameplay setup chunks, right, that get thrown in and, yeah, and get procedurally generated into a, a new level. I think it's kind of an interesting approach and I think, you know, would definitely be a great experience for designers. Um, Art-wise, too, I see lots of room for really kind of challenging, you know, artists for those of you who are thinking about um, you know, wondering like what the possibilities are with this project. I think you could do a lot with particle effects. Um, you could do a lot with, you know, the mini bosses and whatnot. And I, I think you guys are right. This is a really great opportunity to really challenge yourself in a very different way. So, great job. Great, <laughs> thank you. Um, and I have one piece of feedback uh, from my perspective, which is uh, I would potentially reconsider <coughs> Git and I have a whole number of technical reasons as to why Git is generally a terrible source control for game development. It is because it does not handle assets very well at all, because it puts the history of everything on your local system. So you'll be do doing like multi-gig get, uh, gets after a while. I would generally lean away from Git and choose something else like Perforce. Perforce? Yeah. yeah. Perforce is, and it's, yeah. I don't know why Git is such like this, the new hotness in games. It's such the wrong tool. Um, great. Let's hear for them. That was great. Great job. Really good job, guys. Okay. So next is Riley. This is Riley Cox. He's going to be talking about the project name of Melonhead. Uh, as Rez said, my name is Riley. Um, I'm the designer on Melonhead. Melonhead is a uh, third-person shooter and action game uh, based on uh, 80s movies set in the Cold War era. Uh, it's super cheesy, uh, tons of heavy-hitting combat and explosions. Um, the, the game is set in this alternate 80s universe where an evil dictator named Melonhead has risen to power. Uh, he has a literal melon for his head, um, and only a ragtag group of rebels can stop him. Uh, the player steps into the shoes of one of four playable characters. Uh, for the purposes of the collaboration, we'll just be making one character, and we'll also be making just the first level of the game. Um, but I've planned out six different levels. These are story-driven linear levels uh, with a heavy focus on combat, so thinking of games like Warhammer 40K Space Marine or Gears of War are pretty good examples. Uh, ultimately, Melonhead has this diabolical plan to melt, uh, mount a super weapon on the moon, and zap the earth, turning everyone into melon-headed versions of themselves, and they'll be his uh, mind-controlled slaves. The player will be doing a lot of fighting throughout the course of the game, and I pretty much want to take the combat style of Warhammer 40k Space Marine and plop it right into Melonhead. Um, the over-the-shoulder third-person shooting with really big, heavy-hitting weapons is a lot of fun, um, and having tons of enemies coming at the player at all times really makes them feel powerful and epic. Uh, like I said before, there's four playable characters, but we'll pi be picking one of them for the collaboration. Each one has two weapons and one ultimate ability that makes them feel really powerful in combat. So if you've played things like Overwatch, you kind of get the idea. 
the first level is a flashback, like this kind of prologue set in this uh, Soviet-inspired city. Melonhead has uh, taken over the world and um, the player's trying to stop him. I'm hoping for between 30 and 35 minutes of gameplay um, with some cutscenes and voice characters for all the voice actors and, and audio people out there. Um, and again, it's linear level design, so we can set up really cool cinematic experiences throughout. Uh, the main goals are uh, just the one 30 to 35 minute level with the playable character that has two weapons, um, one ability, a few enemy types, and a couple voiced NPCs. I'd love to continue this project after the one semester, building additional levels and playable characters. This is a pretty big project, and I'm aware of that. Um, and so maintaining the scope will be the main hurdle throughout the project. Um, but the nice thing is that I think everyone has played a shooter before, and people understand the mechanics and, and how to make one fun. Um, the game will be made for PC, um, and I think it would be great to release a demo of it on Steam by the end of the project. And it definitely targets a more mature audience. The main gameplay inspiration, like I said before, is Warhammer 40k Space Marine, but Borderlands and Broforce also have these really over-the-top uh, action style experiences that are a lot of fun. Art-wise, going for a really stylized, chunky uh, model style with minimalist textures, this really ups the cartooniness of the game, uh, and we can have cool enemies and, and environments that the player will have a lot of fun running around and then blowing things up. Team, uh, games like Team Fortress 2 and Counter Spy are kind of my main inspirations for this. And they have just really funny characters and, and uh, setups. So as far as who I'm looking for for the team, pretty much everyone who makes games, uh, from 3D modelers to programmers to uh, audio people, and everyone can get a really high quality portfolio piece out of this. Uh, it'll be really polished, and it's the kind of thing that you would make at a real studio. So that's Melonhead. It's a trope-filled action game with a lot of humor and shooting, and it has that villain with the melon for the head. So, yeah. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> okay, sorry, yeah. Good job. So if there are any questions, come on up to the mic. Um, so you said you're creating just one level. Mm -hmm. um, 30 to 35 minutes can be a really long time with a lot in it. Yeah. So how many enemy types are you picturing in that level? Um, I've been told that it's more reasonable to stick to like two enemy types, and I think the length of the gameplay then can come down because fighting two enemies for 30 minutes isn't always the most fun. I would love to get up to like four different enemy types, including some kind of like mini-boss style enemies, but that really depends on the size of the team we have, I think. I'm still the only one in line, so how many <laughs> weapon types? <laughs> uh, each character has two different weapon types, and so each character has their own two weapon types. Okay, so, so they're built eight, in yeah. to the character, yeah, and you're not getting so, weapens yeah. throughout the level? Right, okay, it's like cool. a character-based uh, or like class-based kind of kind of deal. Um, and then also their big ultimate ability, too. Great, so, thank you. Yeah. Did you have a game engine in mind? Uh, yeah, I'm most uh, familiar with Unity, and so that would be a great start. Um, but if programmers are really good at using Unreal, I think that would also be a good fit because they have stuff like Matinee, um, and you can set up a lot of cinematic stuff a lot easier than than in Unity, I think. So mm -hmm. it really kind of depends on the team. Yeah, so you're you're like willing to change yeah, based definitely. on your team. Yeah. Cool. So I love the concept, definitely interesting, and the whole 80s and over-the-top vibe mm -hmm. has sold me thus far. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned you wanted to go possibly to a Steam demo, and uh, it depends on if you're using the programs that you have at home with the student license or here that we have proper licenses. Mm -hmm. I don't know the exact details would have you considered like the the fact that if you use a student license you can only use it for educational stuff and might not be able to release it on steam yeah i mean the steam idea is is more like a an end goal of yeah, having like a okay. really cool thing to put out there for the the world um i don't think for like a demo it wouldn't be yeah. the kind of thing we'd try to sell it would be more like here's a free game that play too. it and think that it's cool um but we could also try to put it on other sites that you can just have free games yeah on game there. jolt or itch.io are good ones uh, yeah yeah that Thanks. would be a good goal do you have anybody on your team already 
Um, I have uh, one concept artist that I've been working a little bit. She's in the back there. Um, but that's it so far. Okay, I was also going to say that. I didn't see that up there. Do you need concept artists too? Because I didn't see concept artists. Yeah, um, I think a lot of the, the team um, like size and, and personnel would be something that I would want to work with um, like a, a teacher on. Of their, using their knowledge to like know, okay, who do we actually need to make the game? Um, I think when it comes to concept artists, it would be great to have just one or two uh, to mainly focus on building the parts of the game that will be in the hands of the player at all times. So having just a few concept artists is my personal goal. Okay, cool. Yeah. Great. Anyone else? Oh, we have an online question. Uh, okay. Is there any mechanics you are thinking of including in the game? Uh, I mean, just kind of the main thing I think at the start will be making combat really fun, making the feel of the weapons feel really cool um, will be the main goal. And then as far as like kind of cinematic experiences go, we can really pull a lot from 80s movies. So, you know, like having a helicopter sequence where you have a minigun up there and you're shooting tons of enemies on the ground, doing stuff like that, that will be like these really fun, cool, unique experiences uh, will be kind of as we go and, and we can assess the scope of the game. Kind of working off that, how exactly does the ultimate ability uh, play into the gameplay? Yeah, um, I've been thinking a lot about like doing kill streaks where your uh, weapons become more and more powerful as you kill more and more enemies, and then kind of once you like max out on your kill streak, you'll be able to use this ultimate ability. And so each character has their own. So um, like one of the characters, he turns into this like Hulk-like monster, where he's all roided out on genetically modified like steroids and stuff, um, and he just like smacks people around. Another lady uh, kind of like slows down time. She's really into kung fu and can like jump around the battlefield. So a lot will kind of be, that's, that's where I think we can use like really cool fun ideas um, and, and make it as like big and explosive as possible. So, Sounds badass, thank you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Any judges feedback? I have a piece of feedback. Mm -hmm. I would highly recommend, uh, regardless of, of, unless you're completely terrified by it, I would highly recommend using Unreal for this. Mm -hmm. Unreal will get you uh, a good chunk of the way towards what you're trying to do by going to open template first person shooter. You will drop into a level, you will have an interesting running around shooting things yeah. experience. I would highly recommend that you use it. It has the tools that you need and was originally designed to create this kind of game. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, more, yeah. So that's my recommendation. Okay. Anyone else? me? Yeah. <laughs> um, so because of the length and you mentioning cutscenes and everything, mm -hmm. just having done the collab I did, I would be make sure you're really ready to cut some mm -hmm. of that stuff um, yeah. if this were to make it. Like cutscenes, yeah. I feel like you need almost a whole separate team on. So yeah. just And to me, honestly, I think games are most fun when you're actually playing the game and not necessarily watching a movie. And so having cutscenes be minimal and only to kind of like push certain like dialogue things forward will be the goal. So mainly gameplay less on cutscenes. Cool. Yeah. All right. Great. Yeah, great. Great job. Thank you. Let's hear it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Now we have Ryan. Uh, hello, my, hello, my name is Ryan um, and I'm excited to present my game, Doxa. Uh, it's uh, The Sims meets Mass Effect in a narrative-driven social, social strategy game where players charm, deceive, and humor the way up the social ladder or die a lonely death. <laughs> um, this game is kind of a, a, a new kind of game or kind of taking a, a mechanic from most AAA games, which is the dialogue system. Um, I'm looking to bring dialogue and open world games to more of a gameplay mechanic. So, for example, Doxa is a character-based narrative adventure game that mirrors human culture, mirrors human, human culture's nature of status, superficiality, and communication in the 21st century. Uh, the character assumes the role of the pure one, embodied as a man mannequin that, uh, that can become whatever the player decides to design. The character must venture through the city of Doxa, gaining status and connections by socially manipulating its citizens through a dynamic dialogue gameplay mechanic. 
uh, the citizens of Doxa have the same self-serving motivations, thus how you look, uh, what you say, and how you say it is key a factor to determine who gets what they want. And I do have a prototype, it doesn't work in this program for some reason. And this prototype is just kind of get you involved into the world and kind of the, the way it plays. Um, so I don't have the character customization in the game yet, so I did uh, substitute it with, you know, changing the character's color to represent you could be different people. Um, and the point of this game, the point of this demo is to first attract the people you want to talk to. Um, if you don't attract the people you want to talk to, uh, you can't engage them in conversation. So, for example, I want to talk to this red guy, but the attraction is very low, so I can't engage in the conversation. But if I want to create my character and change him to a red guy, um, you know, it's all, it's all good. And also, there's a listening mechanic. So holding G, you know, turns off the background music and displays the dialogue. So you can listen to what the, what the NPC says. Um, and then you choose your options that are floating around here, which are affected by your, your mood, your attraction, everything. So it kind of, you know, takes that mechanic of dialogue and making it more fun, you know, for, for all games. Um, so some pillars, uh, so the player starts with a uh, mannequin character with uh, no context of why they are there. The world is set in a near future in a city of abundance full of humans using gene modification for aesthetic appeal uh, to differentiate and progress themselves. Uh, the player starts with three starting motivations, you know, where, who, how, like it's, it's discovering yourself in the world. Um, and as you complete those motivations, kind of similar to The Sims, new motivations will come up. So, yeah, it's you know, a open world, but you know, a very small you know, stage, kind of city block kind of open world. Um, quick run through of the game. Like you, when you create your character, yeah, you start kind of you know, playing Jane, and then you could sense this gene modification. You could do anything from change your skin color to add arms. Even the clothes you wear adds value to who you are, and that you know, affects the attraction. Um, then you're engaged in a conversation, just like I kind of demoed in the video. Um, the mechanics is kind of, you know, taking the options of no more dialogue uh, games and making those options, you know, move around, uh, float around, vibrate, change the scale based on the attraction and the mood and just, um, you know, and what affects the conversation. Um, so it kind of basically wor works. Uh, you track someone, you talk to them, and then if it all goes good, you guys could, uh, you know, connect and, you know, be a companion or, uh, you know, group up. <clears throat> uh, this is played, uh, it's going to be on PC, but I'm going to use controller input just because it feels better. Um, and it's for everyone. It's just like, you know, something like The Sims. It's for men and women, young and old. There's a competitive aspect to it. There's a, a bonding aspect to it. Um, and some similar games like The Sims, you create your own character. Uh, just like the Sims, every NPC is, you could talk to them. You could talk to them, get in, in depth conversations. All, each one's different. Um, it's kind of a, a dynamic dialogue system. Uh, similar to Mass Effect, uh, kind of cinematic, you know, back and forth. And even Laser Shoot Larry. Um, Unfortunately, Ryan, we've uh, run out of time, so we're okay. going to have to Thank you. jump out to the next one. And <clears throat> let's hear it for Ryan. So we're going to have to open up to questions now. You said die like a lonely death. How would you necessarily die in this game? Uh, <laughs> if you don't attract enough people, your mood goes lower, and that makes it harder for the conversations to, to win. And so maybe you not, won't die, but you will be very depressed. Well, then. Thank you. Yep. Hello. I would like to preface this where to say I'm very impressed with uh, the tech demo you had, and it's a very kind of Abst not abstract, but atypical game, and I really like that aspect. Um, is there a sort of end game to this game, like a kind of goal you complete, or is that completely up to the player? Uh, the, the end game is, you know, to solve the quest and kind of just, you know, go up the social ladder. There's like a rank, each competition you win, you win reputation, which, you know, inspire the others. And so basically, you get higher reputation, more popular, and uh, you get, um, uh, it's all about connecting. So kind of the game is about connecting to, uh, to each other, which, well, the NPCs, so. Cool. So, yeah. Uh, also, one other question. Uh, 
are NPCs procedurally generated, or is there like uh, a set different? They are from the same uh, assets that your character custom uh, screen has. So just like Fallout or something, they're all kind of from the same assets. Cool. Thanks. Yep. Mm -hmm. For the semester, um, are you planning on having it like Mass Effect where everyone can talk? Like, do you actually want people to do voice work and stuff like that? Uh, we'll see. It's it's designed to well, you know, you could just have text and you know without voice work. But if voice work is available, um, it could definitely be a part of it and add, add, add a lot to the experience. So. So I noticed at the beginning that bit we had uh, you die lonely death. Mm -hmm. It kind of felt like the way you worded it, you wanted to do some commentary on human nature. Did yeah. you want to? Yeah, there's some themes on in this game. You know, from beauty to. Uh, to just, you know, you know, the way social media is, you know, how people present themselves. Uh, and I think it's interesting to explore, as well as explore more dialogue in video games in general and make it more fun instead of just multiple choice options. So, thank you. Hi there. An online uh, person would like to know what would you like to get done during this collab? Just because it seems like a lot, a uh, complex game, and what would you want to get done during a semester? Too? Uh, during this semester, most of the gameplay mechanics are going to be programmed in. So during the collab, mostly a lot of you know 3D modeling, uh, you know written dialogue, uh, animation, and maybe some you know designers could help you make the game a little more fun, more appealing, and uh, you know spec out some of the. Uh, the gameplay for, for gameplay balance, but kind of more just, you know, polishing it out. Uh, I was also really impressed by the tech demo um, and, and the mechanics at play. Would there be un other things uh, going on in the game? Because, like, I'm imagining it's like Deus Ex, but without the combat. Mm -hmm. So, like, let's say you want to go past, like, a big bodyguard, and it's like, would you, gr gr like, uh, get items throughout the world, collect them, and utilize them? Yes, uh, some motivations required to talk to certain uh, people to get more upgrades for yourself, uh, so like more apparel or more, I say DNA, which you could mod your body even more, which affects your attraction even more. So, um, so yeah, you, you get like access to locations and to, to more things if you win certain dialogues uh, with certain characters. So you showed us the tech demo of the kind of interaction system, mm -hmm. but how about the character building system, like the, your customization? Did you have a tech demo for that already, or is that something that's uh, expected to be made? It's being uh, made this semester, so it's going to be kind of, it can be a simple one. You basically choose your archetype, uh, your faction, and just your, and then your appearance. And uh, pretty basic, and it's going to be mostly designed uh, this semester. And so next semester it'll be polishing it up. Great. Uh, do we have any judge feedback, judges' feedback that we want to give? While people are wandering up there, I will say that having worked on The Sims, uh, scope will be your biggest issue. Oh, yeah, Player sure. customization was an entire team of That's like 20 people skills. working for four or five years. Mm. So it's, you know, stuff like that will be, will be a significant challenge. Thanks. Yeah. That's pretty much exactly what I was going to say. Um, I think for something like this, it is really ambitious, and, and I understand that you already have a lot to go off of. Um, but I think one of the most important things is to choose a couple of your favorite parts of it and really hone in on those aspects so you can get a finished product rather than a bunch of um, started pieces of a big unfinished game. Yeah, for sure, yeah, it's definitely designed, uh, you know, plan A's and B's and definitely take, you know, building on something simple and small and growing it. So it's designed for, for a, a small scale that could still, you know, be a full engaging game, so. And I'm going to echo that and also reiterate, yeah, that it does feel it's very content heavy. Mm -hmm. So again, just kind of reeling in the uh, scope of the game. Um, in particular, I'm more worried about like just the amounts of dialogue that you'll need to generate kind of unique, really deep conversations. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of an area of worry whether you're going to have designers do that. Do you need to pull in writers outside? Yeah, definitely looking for writers. I didn't get to that screen, that. but looking for writers. I took a lot of screenwriting myself. Um, but yeah, looking for writers and the way the dialogue is going to be kind of like with texting, a lot of, you know, three word answers uh, to get the point across. So it's a lot of dialogue, but that's, um, um, yeah, it's, it's designed to, uh, uh, with, with a small scale in mind and a large scale in mind. So, okay. yep. and other than that, I just want to say it's a really interesting concept and I think it's like a great idea. Thank you. Awesome. Let's hear it for Ryan.
Good job. So next we're going to have a game called Hemlock and the Horrible Net by Casey Fay. Um, so let's hear it for them. All right. Sorry, hi. Uh, so I'm Casey Fay, and uh, I'm pitching uh, Hemlock and the Horrible Net, which is an underwater-themed side-scrolling physics game. Uh, I'll skip this for time, but this is the main character. Hemlock is the little octopus guy, and he rides around on a uh, manta ray. Um, and there's a, a kind of a screenshot of it. Um, so you're being chased by a net, and the goal is to stay away from the net. Um, the things that knock you into the net are uh, trash, so like cans or whatnot. And then you want to keep fish from getting knocked into the net as well. Um, you want to save them. Uh, so what's unique, I think, about this, um, it's a side scroller, so there's thousands of those, right? But uh, there aren't thousands of aquatic themed ones. And this one also deals slightly with environmental issues because it shows uh, things like trawl fishing in a negative light um, and trash in the sea and stuff like that. Um, so these are some of the characters. Uh, these are fish up top, like one's a cupcake fish, a sausage fish. So it's <laughs> kind of goofy stuff like that. And then like these little guys on the right here are like enemy fish that might get sent at you. Um, let's see. So it's a mobile gaming thing. So you'll, you'll operate it by tilting your phone. Uh, and it'll go up and down as you tilt it. Um, so let's see. It's for everybody. So rated E. I mean, obviously, you look at the characters there. They're cutesy little things. So, um, but you know, I wouldn't be opposed to adding a, um, you know, like a, a difficulty level uh, to add more interest for other gamers. And you know, maybe change the character so it isn't just Hemlock. We could do all kinds of like creatures and stuff and different mounts and all sorts of things. So it was inspired mostly by this game Scoops. Uh, which is a really simple game. It's just a, um, an ice cream cone, uh, and you chase and you catch falling, uh, what do you call them? Scoops of ice cream. And uh, if you get vegetables hit you, then you lose. So um, oh. it's really, really simple. Um, but it had over you know, 100,000 downloads, so um, it was just pretty cool. This other game that was kind of inspiring for it is this uh, Super Sam Adventure. Same concept. It's uh, up and down instead of horizontal, but it's like... Uh, it's a physics game where you tilt the thing, um, tilt your phone and whatnot. So, yeah. Um, so obviously it's going to be really stylized, lots of rounded edges, uh, pleasing color schemes, really bright. Um, we'll deal with uh, some of the things, um, the more important things, a little bit more graphically, and that they'll have a, you know, hard outline around them. Uh, I would say Plants vs. Zombies is the is the probably the main uh, influence as far as the art is concerned. Um, I really like the way that game looks, and so yeah. By uh, halfway, I think that it's such a simple sort of mechanic of a game. I was hoping that we could have most of that done and then 80% of all the assets sort of done and then just focus on making it a fun game and then adding secondary stuff, you know. Uh, at the end of the semester, I'd like one level that we could, you know, have downloadable from the App Store. Um, if we get going further, you know, that'd be cool and then add a bunch of other stuff, you know, like more levels and you could do cutscenes. There's all sorts of stuff you could do to make this more fun, but at uh, the basic level, you know, just keep it simple and get it done. That's the idea there. Uh, to, to, um, yeah, so like if we run out of time for potential cuts, you know, I could, we wouldn't have to add, you know, any of the bells and whistles, right? So it could just be simple and plain. You dodge trash, you catch fish, and then you, you know, stay out of the net. That's it. If we have more time, add some more stuff. Um, uh, the difficulties. Skip that for time. I need uh, everybody. I got uh, two. Another artist would be great. Programmers, animators, uh, UI designer would be great. Uh, sound designer would be awesome. Um, and I think the main benefit of working on this game would be that we can get it done. Like it's a, it's going to be a cute game, and it's simple, so we could make it really awesome and uh, get it done. So I'm running out of time. So gotta hustle, hustle, hustle. Where are you? Uh, so I made this thing, don't be mad, uh, don't ding me too much, the animation is goofy, you know what I mean, but it's okay, we'll do it. So this is kind of the mechanics of it, um, what do you call it? So it's a little bit goofy, um, I didn't use any of the animation principles really, but you see what's going on, like you're dodging the things, staying out of that net, and you're catching little fishies. Uh, 
and that's how you win, basically. So what will happen is when the trash hits you, it knocks you back into the net, and then maybe when the, you catch a fish, it'll bring you back forward. You don't ever move any forward or backwards by yourself. It's really just up or down for you, um, and you dodge things like that, and that's uh, about it. So thank you very much. Awesome. Great job. Thank you. Do we have any questions? I knew you were going to come up. <laughs> you always, always. ask questions. Um, so very interesting art style. I, I find it appealing, even though it's just supposed to be targeted towards kids. But maybe that's because I'm immature. Uh, <laughs> I was just wondering uh, if, if you're planning any progression in terms of score, you unlock more abilities, potentially. And also, how exactly does the controlling work when you tilt? Oh, so uh, the tilting thing is basically you go up, I guess, when you tilt one way, down the other way, and that's it. So um, it's horizontal? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, totally. Right. And then, yeah, I mean, there's tons of things you could do. Like, yeah. you know, every time you get a fish, you get points, and you could have it where, you know, uh, you have a store where you can buy things like bait that'll draw a fish to you or like a magnet that repels the metal things away from you. Like, there's all sorts of stuff you could do. But uh, that's time permitting, I think. So thank you. Yeah. All right. Online question: If the game is free and will have in-app purchases or monetization? I'm thinking. Well, if it's just one level, then free, and that's plenty fine for me. Um, if you know we get a really big team or a team that's, that cranks it out and we can get it to sell, then I would just sell it for like a dollar. You know, but that would have to be enough gameplay to merit it, I think, you know, like a, at least, you know, eight levels, something like that. Another online question, what makes you want to make this game? Uh, I just like uh, cute stuff and ocean. I like and that. I also don't like trawl fishing, uh, so <laughs> I put that in there to make it kind of show that it's bad. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, I just want to ask, um, is the animation going to be frame by frame, or are you going to plan to do the joint animation? Um, ooh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know much about animation. Is, are you I did going this, for a but it's not very good. Skullgirls kind of like frame by frame animation type. Um, hand drawn for uh, 3D models. Definitely not 3D. So yeah, hand drawn. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Great game. Yeah, sorry, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> and that's also something that the lead artist or animator can figure out as well. Right. Yeah. So not all of this stuff is set in stone. Any any other questions, or should we turn it over to the judges? Chelsea has a question. Done. Chelsea would play 99 cents to play the game, so, so vote that's me what in. we should do. Let's open it up to judge feedback, if there's any judges' feedback. Um, so I really like the look of this game, and out of all the projects so far, I feel like this scope is very doable, and you can have a very fun thing pretty quickly. So good job reeling it back and making it something that you can achieve in a semester. Thank you. I know you said definitely not 3D, but just an option 2D gameplay with 3D assets. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I think right, I don't. I don't think it would look it. right in there. I don't know. Maybe. But For someone not. who doesn't really play games, um, how is it going to get more challenging? Well, so you could have. Um, you could, there's tons of things. Like you could have uh, guys dropping dynamite in uh, while you're going, or like a hook could just come through, or like if you go to different levels, you know, there'd be geysers and like landmines and all sorts of things. Right. And just things like more, the speed of the things could come faster. Um, you know, mm -hmm. so that sort of, right. of thing. Um, I think something that could be really cool with this game is like if, if you do get to make this, um, really honing in on the various things that destroy our oceans and having this game really be about awareness and saving our oceans and that kind of thing. Because I don't... I mean, there may be some games out there like that that do that, but I think um, there's not a lot of games that get made here that do that kind of thing. So I think that's really cool. Thank you. Yeah, I'd love to add more stuff like just, you know, oil barrels and you know things like that. Awesome. Great job. Thank you. Let's hear it. Great. Next is going to be Aara who is going to talk about his game Patronus, which sounds very familiar. Hi, everyone. Um, let me just set up this. OK. 
Uh, this is the uh, um, mobile hack and slash action RPG, sci-fi and dark uh, cyberpunk uh, settings. So the gameplay is uh, simple. So you have to just uh, uh, you're controlling the uh, character who is uh, the goal to uh, protect the uh, objective. It could be a uh, base, like fort, or uh, it could be like uh, civilians that you have to uh, save them. So um, the enemies are uh, um, attacking from the uh, several paths. So you have to uh, uh, be worried um, and uh, 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 have to save the, uh, your uh, objective. So uh, here's the map. Uh, the map. So um, uh, there's a uh, random generated map. So uh, the player will not uh, be uh, uh, <clears throat> used to it. And also, there's a two or uh, uh, three paths that the uh, <clears throat> enemies will uh, uh, attack. So the uh, <clears throat> uh, target is uh <clears throat> the mobile, um, iOS, and the uh, Android. <clears throat> so this is the uh, art style. It's pretty. <clears throat> uh, uh, dark and sci-fi universe with this uh, uh, the <clears throat> top-down shooting uh, uh, gameplay like in the uh, Hell Divers you can see so this is like the uh, uh, enemies it's uh, like a uh, AI who are uh, uh, decided to destroy the all humanity uh, this is the uh, pretty simple uh, standard control. So from the left side, you have uh, the uh, sticker of. From the uh, right side, you have the uh, action patterns and abilities. So this is your <coughs> uh, character. So you are uh, starting from the small robot, and by uh, <clears throat> slaying the enemies, you will have uh, uh, um, opportunity to uh, build yourself, upgrade yourself, or maybe um, uh, build the weapons. <clears throat> so this is the uh, um, abilities and skills. You have uh, like uh, three basic abilities and one uh, ultimate ability and you have to <clears throat> have a choice to have the uh, uh, two separate builds so you have to think uh, to control the uh, uh, enemies types uh, you know enemies uh, the goal is to have the, um, um, the solid game uh, three levels different levels for one semester and build both uh, single player and cooperative uh, modes. And the benefit is uh, the student will have uh, a solid demo reel for their uh, portfolio. And also, they will have the uh, experience of having the communications, uh, co cooperative skills, and also have. Uh, uh, have fun on making the uh, games. And currently needed, so you can see all of them. <laughs> and also, I um, wish to have the uh, web designers and people who uh, uh, will make the uh, ad uh, 
from this game, like uh, visual artists. So, thank you very much. This is Patronos. Great. Do we have any questions? Hi, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you for doing a grim, gritty style. That's personally my favorite thing <laughs> in thank video you. games. Um, second, um, what engine were you planning on using? Uh, Unity or uh, Unreal, but it depends on the, uh, the students. So uh, if I have uh, 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 more students who uh, uh, are able to work in the uh, 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 Unreal, I would uh, definitely pick up the Unreal engines. Okay. And um, I'm sorry, just another thing. Um, as far as uh, the gameplay style, is there any games in particular that inspired you from it? Because I know art-wise it was Diablo 2, but the, that, for example, inspired gameplay? Yes. I mean, the uh, inspiration from the gameplay style is the uh, Hell Divers. So this is like a uh, top-down, and you are... Uh, uh, you're controlling your uh, character, and you can like shoot or uh, using abilities. Plus, it's like a, in a dark, like in a Fallout or in a, a Diablo Cyberpunk, you know, you, uh, your style. Okay. And I'm sorry for hogging the mic, but I just thought of one more question. <laughs> um, so, if back of the line. <laughs> Yeah, we want to cycle through people, so yeah. No, it's okay. It's totally cool. Stay in line, but... <clears throat> Hello. I know this is focused on being a hack and slash game, but are you uh, planning on having any kind of player mechanics that accommodate more like a defensive play style, perhaps, or is it mostly just focused on the action? It's only uh, like you uh, have to defend the uh, um, objective. It's like to be like uh, the base, and you have to like, you know, hack and slash all the enemies. But uh, I don't know. Mm. Could be like more if it would help. Also, uh, for level progression, were you thinking of more like a wave-based style, or would it be yes, like? Yes, it's a wave-based. Mm. Like uh, we have, uh, um, like one uh, session, we'll have uh, uh, ten waves, and I uh, each time it will be like more and more um, stronger. And every fifth wave uh, will be like uh, mini boss, and on the uh, tenth wave it will be one solid big boss. So you have to like, cool. you know, Thanks. kite him and cool. jump around. Cool. Thank you. How's it going? Um, there was a slide on there that, that mentioned random generating levels, and I'm just sort of curious, what, to what extent uh, are they randomly generated? So, uh, I mean, there, uh, uh, it could be like uh, uh, three paths, uh, or uh, uh, it could be like uh, four paths. So you will, uh, you will also have the opportunity to uh, interact with the game uh, map. So, for example, by uh, doing the bonus objective, uh -huh. you can have like uh, ability to uh, wipe entirely uh, one lane. So you will have only deal with the uh, you know the rest of them, or you can just close the uh, wave. And it will be always like you know uh, randomly. From the left or from the right side, from the top, it's like you know. Okay. Um, okay. Great. Thanks. Hi, it's me again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> last question, I promise. So, regardless if this gets picked to be a student collab for next semester or not, are you still interested on working on the project anyway, just to have it come out, come to life? Yeah. I mean, if if, uh, if uh, we'll have. Uh, uh, a lot of students will uh, definitely will have the uh, work more in the uh, uh, next semesters. Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You mentioned co-op being one of your goals for the collab. Um, so on a mobile game, so are you looking at networked co-op or? I don't know actually about that. Right. I, I just want to uh, see the like uh, two or three players are playing together, so and and they uh, should have cooperate each other. So uh, uh, every character will have the uh, uh, unique abilities that will complement each other. So yeah. Okay, so they all have their own phones and their yes, yes, okay, yes. Cool. yeah, on different phones.
Okay, that's how much time we have for questions. So if there's judges feedback, we can give that. Uh, my big feedback for you is scope. Um, it's, there's a lot of stuff going on and a lot of technically heavy stuff. Uh, networked multiplayer is hard. So be willing to cut that and be willing to scope those things sure, out sure. when you figure out all the, all the stuff. Yeah, I was going to say um, the same thing again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, like you have random generation and you have co-op and, and just it seems like there's a lot of big features that might not make it into the final game. So And then also like the three levels. So mm -hmm. just like I said before, like honing in on the stuff that you really can't live without and okay. then um, going from there if you have extra time. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, I think the, the game idea is fun. It's definitely a genre that I really enjoy. Um, one big piece of feedback I have is that scans, for example, that image there, really are not readable. So yeah, sorry about that. Um, it's, it's okay. It just doesn't get the information across. So if you were to pitch again. I mean, um, this is the, uh, the like, uh, uh, three layers. Mm -hmm. so you can, and the, uh, in the middle, you can see the, like, like the uh, <coughs> characters, one, two, three. And okay. this is the uh, uh, shop. So there will, uh, uh, um, will be shop, like you can buy the uh, upgrades. And by slaying the enemies, they will be uh, dropping the like scraps, and you will collect them and uh, upgrading yourself, upgrading okay. your uh, weapon or your uh, or uh, researching uh, blueprints. So this is shown cool. there. Okay, great. Well, good luck. Thank you. All right, let's hear one big hand for Ara. Thank you. And an even bigger hand for everyone. That's it. Those are our five, our five uh, contestants.